Hey guys, Thomas the Slow Genie here, aka Mosa Sham, and I'm here to review the movie Underwater. Now, if you end up enjoying this review, then please consider joining my Patreon page. There'll be the second link in the description below. And I all I will already promise that if I get enough Patreon supporters, finally, I will the first issue that I will fix is this lighting issue. Uh, I've talked about this in the press previous reviews, but again, I just want to make that crystal clear that the first thing I'm going to try to fix is the sliding issue. Uh, again, there'll be the second link in the description below. Now let's talk about the movie Underwater. Let that out of, out of the way. <clears throat> so I didn't see any trailers for this movie. The only reason I even know it exists is because I saw someone else's thumbnail on t YouTube and I was like, okay, I'll check that out. That's about the extent of what I knew about Underwater before reviewing it right now uh, and seeing it for myself. So, the movie begins with some text on the screen and some other writing that is stuff. Uh, we then cut to a long submarine uh, that is conducted of several long uh, hallways underwater with our lead named Nora, and the first thing she does is start narrating to the audience. Now, I already have an issue with this right out of the gate uh, with narration. Um, to me, this is often a sign of someone who does not know how to uh, show what she's saying instead of just her saying it to the audience. Um, she is narrating her emotions to us. She says, she claims that she is uh, full of cynicism, um, but there's never really any point in the movie, at least not to me, maybe I just didn't catch it, uh, where she seemed to have any sense of cynicism. So that bit of dialogue not only seemed unnecessary, but it just isn't it, it doesn't feel true and again maybe I might have missed it but um, again a quick fix for those of you who want to get into the movie business and um, not have this happen immediately is just have her interact with another character and have her remarks come across as someone who is who has the mentality of someone who is filled with cynicism um, and you know, you can do that with sarcasm, I think, a little bit, a little bit of self-doubt, more negative elements appear in cynicism. Um, you know, there are definitely a lot of different tools you can use to get that across without just saying, hey, I'm this character. Um, anyway, uh, she heads out and, uh, she's in like a room by herself and she comes out of it, um touching the wa some of the water that is leaking out, and she's grown slightly suspicious. However, like a f millisecond after noticing the little bits of water uh, dripping down, an entire blast hits the submarine, uh, and she starts to run across uh, this taller black man named Rodrigo joins her. Uh, and the two of them begin j running down the entire length of this hallway together. Um, and she's like trying to, uh, as they're moving along, uh, to uh, call into the radio. So she's using the uh, device, devices uh, equipped to her to find an evac pod. Uh, it should be made evidently pointed out that she is a mechanic among the crew. Um, and as they're trying to make their way to the evac po point, they hear a voice uh, and they pull a third guy. Um, I don't, I didn't write his name, unfortunately, I, I th not immediately, but um, he, I did write it later. His name is Paul. Um, Paul, if I remember correctly, that, that actor was the one that was in, um, uh, what's it called? Um, it's one of the bigger, uh, fur 
first uh, camera, like found footage films, um, Cloverfield, there we go. Uh, he's the annoying guy in Cloverfield when they're in the um, the tunnels. He's like talking about like burning clown zombies or something like that. Um, he's that guy. So he's playing Paul in this movie. Um, and as they're crawl the three of them now are crawling along, um, they find a dead body. They come across the captain of the ship. Uh, but the door is jammed, so she unjams it pretty effortlessly. They also meet their the fifth character with them uh, to meet with it, which is Emily. Um, they go walking down to a room far away, um, and they hear as they're all grouped together. Uh, they hear a strange noise coming from the intercom that they have. Uh, and within this uh, the submarine, they have all of these fancy armor suits. So they all gear up. And two of them, um, uh, Paul and uh, Emily's boyfriend potentially, both grab a gun. Um, so uh, we see very briefly that Rodrigo's like messing with one of the helmets. He's like, hmm, maybe I should wear this one. And he gives that one to her, the lead, um, Nora, and he gives, he takes on another one, um, which leads to the first death, because they end up in an elevator where they head down, um, and the door is, like, being pressurized or something like that, um, and she notices, the first to notice, that his helmet, the one he picked up after the fact, is now cracking, um, and they open the door too quickly, and uh, Rodrigo, the first guy we met, the black guy, he died first. Um, and honestly, I don't really care who dies first in movies anymore, but my issue with this has nothing to do with the color of his skin, but more so, why the fuck did he die that way? Like, what? Dying through... That it's not even the main threat. They died due to their own incompetence at that point. Or he died to their own incompetence at that point. It's like, they didn't even get to the threat yet. And he's already dead. That is so dumb. I'm sorry. I feel really bad for that guy. I really do. So, the remaining crew. The remaining five head further down. And... Paul and the boyfriend guy uh, are out looking for survivors because they get it like a ping out there while the other three are in the the, the elevator part still. Uh, they get in right in front of the ping and they see that um, it is a person covered in um, some sort of weird underwater algae thing. And I think it should be pointed out right now based on that um, uh, description that this movie is very very clearly trying to copy Alien it's no surprise uh, that this movie is just underwater Alien with a different creature that's all this movie is um, so yes now that I have that out of the way uh, they head, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, so they get right back to it, head, heading into the to survivors. Uh, they're being in, uh, sorry, they get right in the front, as I mentioned, um, and something, like, attaches to Paul. Um, and this is why I say this is alien. They bring in the something that was there. They see it's like a baby creature that's alive, and they all do the gasp, just like an alien, but it was a chest burster that came out of the stomach. Instead, it was just a creature that was that looked to be dead, but then they see that it is alive. Very, again, reminiscent of Alien. But the lights go off, and they hear a noise above, um, and one of them, I forget which one of them, or if multiple of them saw it, but they see a bigger creature outside. 
uh, through one of the windows. And from there, the cable car t that they're in drops, and they manage all to get to the uh, midway station, the midway point of the movie. The ride is over, and they move along into the water, into the deep unknown, and uh, Nora decides to go ahead uh, to see what this blockade about is about, because they're in this area. It's like a tunnel that leads from one part to another, uh, and they're they have to go one by one. And Paul is one of the last ones who sorry, is the last one that is put through. Uh, so he's the one who's grabbed and killed by the creature, and it rips right through his suit. And I want to make sure I emphasize that again. He is ripped right through his suit. Uh, and I'm going to emphasize that one more time, because I think I need, it, I need to for what happens later in the movie. He is ripped right through his suit. Got it memorized? Keep that one in note. All right. So, this comes out of completely nowhere. Emily, the girl that was with them, blames humanity. She's like, oh, we should have never come down here this far. What? Oh, okay. It's like, that sort of just jumped out of nowhere. Um, anyway, it's very clear that they were trying to throw in an environmental message, but it makes... It's just thrown in there. It doesn't really fit. Um, anyways, they pull um, the the boyfriend who who I finally wrote his name in my notes, Smith along, uh, and his suit's all kinds of messed up. So now Nora notices one of the creatures, and they turn off their lights, uh, and Smith is like pulled away. And then from there, Nora's like also pulled away because I guess there's more than one of these creatures. So it's more like aliens, plural, than alien. Um, so it's like a bit of a mixture because there's multiple of them. Pulled away onto this platform and the creature, or one of them, um, is like up there with them. And the captain's like up there as well because they were like attached or whatever. Uh, but So they're up really high. The captain drops himself off. Um, from Nora. Um, so now everyone's separated. So now she's moving along uh, to the proposed drill loan. Um, she, she's like looking around and finds some guns and gear. She packs up and heads back out. She hears a voice in her intercom and finds Emily. They drag Smith along. Uh, and as they are walking and talking, they're talking about dogs because they want to be distracted from this hell. And they want to get to the roadblock drill, which is the location that they were told to get to at the beginning by the captain. Um, and as the last little point of their um, journey, uh, right at the drill, of course, there are several creatures surrounding them. Hmm, that sounds a lot like aliens, doesn't it? So Emily, uh, Emily um, and Nora uh, are trying to scuffle by. Uh, as they're scuffling by, Emily's suit goes off, like because it has like a warning of like when you're out of air or almost out of air. Um, but it ends up being like Nora who ends up being grabbed. So she's grabbed, tossed around. Um, and then, so get this, Nora is pulled up by, by one of them, is tossed and slammed into the ground with the suit on. She's eaten whole by this creature, practically. I remember what I said earlier, that other guy, his suit, they, they bit right through the suit. But nope, she, because she's the protagonist and because she's the lead lady, she gets to the have a flare on her because she grabs from one from inside and shoots it from within the creature. But that does wake, wake up the others. Um, but they're sort of still sort of scuffling about. They don't know, I don't think none of them truly know her location yet. 
However, she hears a very disturbing noise and shoots another uh, flare, only to see an even bigger creature, <coughs> Queen Alien, <clears throat> um, Queen, but I should describe that the creatures look like squid-like creatures, or octopi, or the mixture of the two. Um, the creature um, emerges, a little blast happens as it like plows into the earth, or the ground. Uh, both of them are like spun out of control. Uh, Nora is more affected than Emily. Emily manages to drag not only her, but um, him, uh, Smith, inside her boyfriend as well. So the three of them are able to move along. And they get to the three pods. There are all, all so conveniently three pods in the room that they were in. So if by chance all of the characters survived up until this point, there were only going to be three pods anyway. <laughs> and not only that, one of the pods doesn't work. So Nora in a self-sacrificing moment, sends the other two up first, making sure that uh, they are safe. So they shoot up. Uh, and it's kind of made obvious by the time El Emily figures it out, she's already in the pod. So she's like, ah! Uh, so it is now Nora looking at this creature who's sending, this the bigger creature is like sending out its little smaller uh tentacle creatures after the other two that are like blasting their way up she sees that they're eventually probably going to get to them so she does some stuff in the ship that causes it to but before it, and it does explode she decides that she's going to narrate again narrate the ending of her willing to self-sacrifice and cause the explosion to happen and all the creatures Supposedly get caught up in the explosion. And that was Underwater. The, the My review of Underwater. There you go. Uh, so as I mentioned, pretty weak start with narration. Um, the remaining characters, I don't know a lot about them. Uh, except for Paul is pretty much the same character. He... he from what the actor I remember, again, from Cloverfield, uh, he's pretty much the same character as sort of the comedy relief, uh, or attempting to be comedy relief, uh, getting getting the content that he was given up until his death point. Other than that, uh, the only things I can point out are Emily and Smith, her boyfriend and girlfriend, that's their characters. The captain is the captain. That's all I kind of know about him. Other than he has some sort of relationship with Nora. I guess they got a divorce question mark. Or maybe he's with someone else now. I don't know. Uh, that part's a bit unclear. Uh, Nora shit claims to be this one thing. But it never really pops up anywhere in the movie. Um, and yeah. Um. Uh, it's very clearly covering a lot of material from Aliens and Alien. Uh, a bit of that Cloverfield vibe of like, oh, what could this mysterious element be? And it ends up being a monster. Um, a lot closer to Aliens, obviously, with the borrowed scenes. Um, and here's the thing about, you know, someone ripping off another movie is that, for me, I don't get as, you know, I don't tack off as many points for that as, as much as I would used to, um, because it's harder and harder to create original ideas, I get it. Um, you know, I think they made it super obvious that it was sort of like a thing they saw, or like, you know, you can either use the word inspired or ripped off. It depend. I think it really depends on, you know, what you're getting here. Um, for, to, and to me, to, for, to specify, uh, I use the word inspired when it cre can create something of equal value or better value than the original. 
And I use the word ripoff when I feel that the content is less. So I'm going to call this a ripoff, unfortunately. And I think it had the potential not to be a ripoff and instead be the, the, the former. Um, but it definitely had to do a lot more to set up the characters. Um, because that is something Alien did and Aliens did very well, is set up these characters. Uh, we know who they are, we meet them really early on in the beginning, we have them interacting, which is very, very important. Um, you know, if you had to take another scene from Alien, you know, even if it is the opening, you know, you have the crew meet up, you have them interact, you have them do all this sort of stuff, you have them banter, that's, banter is so good, I I don't understand why more movies don't have characters bantering, and it doesn't have to be negative banter, they can just be talking about whatever, and that, that can set everything up for you, you know who your characters are now, so much better than having character Nora saying, I am this character, it's, it's very bad writing, um, and it's very poorly executed writing as well. Um, you know, instead of saying, I am this, have the character talk to someone and say something that, or in, in you know, it, it will come through the acting as well that will help, uh, help the cynicism. If that is the core aspect of the character, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you have to present it in a way that is, um, that can come across to the audience. So there you go. Uh, so as for a score, I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a 2 or a 3 out of 10. Um, and I'm being a little, I think I'm being a little bit generous with anything else. Um, no, I, I you know... It, it, it. I'm going to go 2 out of 10, um, and I'm not going to go for a 1, I, because I feel like it is, at least from my understanding, uh, Underwater doesn't seem to be indicative of, like, anything prior in terms of, like, you know, this isn't like the movie I, The Grudge, which is something I reviewed uh just recently um you know this isn't taking something super popular um and messing with it too much that you don't even recognize it it's not that it's 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 its own its own thing quote unquote and it's very obviously copying a lot from aliens um and again as i mentioned i don't mind that as much but the parts that make it more of a ripoff for me is when you don't do the characters justice, you don't tell, you don't give them a compelling enough story, uh, and it could have been. And, you know, if, if people compared it to Aliens and said, well, this movie had equal to Aliens, I would say then it was, you know, it was taking out of inspiration rather than it being a ripoff. That's my... Again, just to make sure people are clear on what I'm saying there. Uh, so again, a 2 out of 10, and if you enjoyed this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head over to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are desperately needed. And until next time, everyone, Bye bye